Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim and uh, welcome to the course of History of English Literature, New Classics to Date. Dear students, this is uh, lecture number 15 and uh, in this lecture uh, we are going to discuss uh, novelists of a romantic age and especially the Gothic novels. I am Muhammad Asif Khan lecturer department of english kohat university of science and technology dear students agenda for uh, this very lesson is that first of all i will introduce you with uh, the romantic age novels and especially the novelists which were famous in that uh, time period and then I will uh, move toward the origin of uh, Gothic novel, especially in the era of Romantic Age. That will be followed by the discussion on the elements of Gothic literature. Subsequently, we will look at uh, the important Gothic novelists including Horace Walpole and Radcliffe. Matthew Gregory Lewis, Charles Robert uh, Mottram and uh, in the end we will discuss Mrs. Shelley and in the end I will give you conclusion of the whole discussion. So let's move uh, towards uh, the novelist of Romantic Age. The colossal personalities uh, of uh, Romantic period uh, novelists include Jane Austen and Sir Walter Scott. But before them, we see that uh, there were some novelists who came uh, under that charm of uh, the spell of uh, medievalism. That is uh, basically one of the major characteristics of uh, the Romantic Age literature and uh, those very novelists uh, they started uh, writing novels of uh, fear, horror or terror. We also name such type of novels as Gothic novels. Now let's move uh, towards uh, the origin of uh, the Gothic fiction uh, the beginning of uh, this type of literature is basically attributed to, to Horace Walpole and uh, the most important uh, novel which he wrote and that is uh, considered as uh, the beginning or origin of the new type of literature is uh, The Castle of Otranto. This very novel was published in uh, 1746 and we see that uh, the story of uh, this uh, novel is uh, being uh, set in medieval Italy. And uh, the special thing about uh, this novel is that it incorporates uh, supernatural and paranormal things uh, in its story. We see a gigantic helmet that can kill its victims by its deadly strikes. We have a number of other mystical or ghostly supernatural interferences that are uh, hindering and obstructing the story. So these obscure and uh, ambiguous things are included in this very uh, novel uh, and we repeatedly come across uh, secret beings in this uh, novel. After this very novel, we see that uh, many, many people, they started uh, copying the style and the pattern set by Horace Walpole. And uh, it was very common during uh, 18th century and uh, it is uh, very much uh, followed in the Romantic uh, era. So that is uh, the beginning of uh, this new genre that is the Gothic fiction in uh, this age. Let's move uh, towards uh, the introduction of Gothic novels. Gothic literature 
is a subdivision or subcategory of uh, gothic horror. So, gothic fiction is a, a subcategory, a variety of gothic uh, horror. So, gothic horror is a genre or it is a technique of literature, that style of literature that merges uh, fiction and uh, horror, number of uh, ambiguous things, unknown things, we see death in these very novels and sometimes you will see the glimpses of romances, uh, the common type of literature in the, in the past history of uh, the literature of England. So, Gothic uh, type of literature is uh, the subcategory of Gothic horror and uh, Gothic horror is a genre or that style or uh, a technique uh, of literature that uh, merges uh, fiction, horror and uh, number of uh, unknown ambiguous things including death and it mixes uh, all these things uh, with romances uh, that was a very common genre in the past history of uh, English novel. Again, as I told you in the last slide, the origin of uh, this type of literature is uh, actually credited uh, to the English author Horace Walpole's novel, The Castle of Otranto. So, Gothic uh, fiction that uh, inclines to, to place emphasis to the feelings, that sentiments aspect of the literature and uh, combines it uh, with uh, a sort of uh, pleasant type of uh, horror or terror. So, it serves uh, as an uh, expansion of uh, the romantic literary movement because we see that uh, the characteristic of uh, medievalism is one of the major aspect of uh, romantic literary movement. And we see that uh, and this inclusion in the literature uh, is uh, relatively a fresh inclusion when Walpole published his novel. Now we will see the chief uh, characteristics of uh, Gothic literature. The first uh, very important uh, aspect of uh, the Gothic literature is uh, mystery and fear. Actually, these very novels, uh, they call to mind the feelings uh, of suspense, secrecy, obscurity or ambiguity in the minds of the reader. And uh, you will see that uh, the reader is feeling uh, nervous or he is having anxiety or tension about uh, those supernatural things and he anticipates such type of things, unknown things in these type of novels. So, omens and curses are very commonly used uh, in these very novels and, uh, and we see that uh, atmosphere or the environment uh, in which these uh, very novels are set are very much uh, full of uh, the feelings of fear and uneasiness. Settings and locations are very ambiguous. You see that uh, it has a very mysterious type of backgrounds. So, these settings uh, are the special component of uh, these very novels. Once again, as I told you, that supernatural and uh, paranormal feelings uh, and activities are very commonly seen in these type of uh, novels. We see that uh, the fascination of uh, Gothic literature, it comes from uh, the genres uh, having suggestions of supernatural and inexplicable events. Another element uh, of uh, Gothic literature is uh, romance. It is widely believed that uh, Gothic uh, literature came out of, uh, of romances and uh, one another important characteristic of uh, Gothic literature is that we, we find bad characters. Villains play a vital role in 
such type of literature. So villain is one of the important uh, element of uh, these type of literature. Another important thing that uh, you will again and again come across uh, feelings of uh, emotional feelings of uh, sorrows, agony, grief or so these uh, very feelings are always there in uh, this type of literature and you will find that gothic writers use melodrama or high emotions to convey their thoughts. Nightmares again an important ingredient of gothic literature and uh, we see that uh, these nightmares uh, have uh, very uh, ancient uh, relationship uh, with the act of uh, anticipating something for example there are foretelling or predicting or or giving us the foresights of the things so these very things are having strong uh, connection with the gothic literature and we see that uh, the gothic writers uh, used uh, these nightmares to further increase and uh, deepen that uh, evocative aspect or haunting aspect of the novel's plot. Now let's move towards the first most important uh, gothic novelist of uh, that age, that is uh, Horace Walpole. Uh, he was born in 1717 and he died in 1797. He was uh, basically an English writer but along with that he has some other important uh, attributes like uh, he was uh, an art historian, man of letters and uh, he has uh, other qualities like he was an antiquarian and Whig politician and uh, we see that uh, his uh, most important work The Castle of Otranto was published in 1764 and it is uh, commonly considered the, the first uh, romantic novel. And uh, the special thing about this is that uh, Horace Walpole himself uh, included uh, that uh, a subtitle to this very novel when he was publishing the second edition. That subtitle was A Gothic Story. And uh, we see that uh, it is uh, the true beginning of this uh, type of genre. So this novel, uh, it uh, mixes medievalism and terror in such a way that uh, it is being followed uh, uh, up till date. So uh, the modern day gothic books uh, and films, arts, music and uh, the gothic subculture, all these things are being shaped uh, on the style being uh, produced by the castle of uh, Trento of Horace Walpole. Now we uh, move towards the second novelist uh, of the Gothic literature, Mrs. Anne Radcliffe. Uh, born on 9th July 1764 and she died on 7th February 1823. One of the major, major uh, novelists of uh, the Romantic Age and she is uh, considered as uh, one of the pioneers of the Gothic fiction. Gothic fiction was originated by Horace Walpole and uh, Mrs. Uh, Anne Radcliffe uh, is uh, the pioneer of Gothic fiction. The special thing is that uh, her, her method or her skill of illustrating apparently supernatural or paranormal uh, elements in her novel has been credited with uh, gaining uh, uh, gothic fiction and respectability in the 1790s. Because of her, we see that uh, gothic novels uh, got that respect, that, uh, that people started reading those novels and they started uh, following the tradition. So important thing about Radcliffe was uh, Radcliffe was uh, the most popular writer of uh, these type of novels. She was admired universally all over the world. And we see that the critics of that time, they called her the powerful and uh, mighty 
enchantress and some of the contemporary critics uh, they named her as uh, the Shakespeare of romance writers. So that was uh, the view of uh, her co contemporary critics and her popularity continued through 19th century and till date uh, people are reading uh, her novels. So I'm just uh, uh, mentioning a few of the important novels of uh, Mrs. Anne Radcliffe and these novels are The Castle of uh, Athelin and Dunbane. The second one is Sicilian Romance. The third one is The Romance of the Forest. The, the fourth one, one of the important uh, novels of uh, Mrs. Anne Radcliffe, The Mysteries of Udolfo or The Mysteries of Udolfo. Fifth uh, novel of Mrs. Anne Radcliffe is The Italian. And the last one is Gaston de Blondeville. So these are the important novels of uh, Anne Radcliffe. And, and the best one, as uh, I already mentioned, The Mysteries of Udolfo and the Italian. These two are the best uh, known uh, novels of uh, Mrs. Anne Radcliffe. And uh, in these uh, novels, she was following tradition and style of Horace Walpole. And uh, we see that uh, in her novels, uh, she unified horror with sentiments. But the important thing is that he very successfully portrayed uh, and sketched the sceneries uh, of uh, that time. So the first most important novel of Mrs. Anne Radcliffe was The Mysteries of Udolfo. And it narrates uh, the story of uh, an innocent and sensitive girl. And we see that uh, she falls uh, in the hands of uh, a merciless uh, villain named as uh, Montoni. And, uh, and the special thing is that uh, he keeps uh, that girl in very depressing, bleak and uh, isolated or uninhabited uh, castle. And uh, that very castle is uh, full of uh, many supernatural mysteries. And we see that uh, there is a lot of terror and fear in this very novel. Another important thing about uh, Mrs. Anne Radcliffe is that uh, her popularity and the popularity of her novels that inspired and motivated uh, some of the great writers of that time and uh, that includes Byron, Shelley and Bronte sisters. And we see that uh, Anne Radcliffe uh, inspired uh, the imagination and uh, the thought of uh, these very writers. So other uh, novelists of Matthew uh, Gregory Lewis and uh, he was born on the 9th July 1775 and died on uh, the date is we do not have confirmed date and there are two dates 14 or 16 may 1818 he was uh, a famous novelist and uh, dramatist and his novels are also uh, categorized and listed as uh, gothic horror and uh, one another thing about uh, matthew gregory lewis is that he is uh, very frequently referred as uh, monk lewis the reason for this is that uh, the novel uh, which he published uh, in 1796 uh, that was named as uh, The Monk was uh, such a huge uh, success that after that people started uh, calling uh, Matthew Gregory Lewis as, uh, as The Monk Lewis. He also worked as uh, a civil servant, uh, a diplomat and politician and he was uh, the landowner in Jamaica, West Indies. Some of the famous works of uh, Matthew Lewis. And these very works are The Monk, it's a novel. And I am just mentioning two collections. The first one is uh, Tales of Terror and the second one is Tales of Wonder. So now let's move uh, toward another important name 
that is uh, Charles Robert uh, Maturin. He was born on 25th September 1780 and he died on 30th October 1824. Another name, abbreviated name, uh, is C.R. Maturin. He was uh, an Irish uh, Protestant clergyman and uh, he wrote many, many Gothic plays and novels. Here just I'm mentioning uh, one of the best known work of uh, C.R. Maturin, that is uh, Melmoth the Wanderer. This novel exercised uh, great influence in France. We see that a number of people in France followed uh, the pattern being set by him. And uh, uh, this novel has uh, one of the uh, supposed character that is a scholar. And uh, you, you see glimpses of Dr. Faustus in this very novel. And uh, that main character, he sold uh, his soul to the devil in exchange for 150 additional years uh, of life. But then he is uh, looking for someone who take over that very treaty that he has done with the, the devil. So, uh, this very novel, again, composed of uh, a sequence of uh, nested uh, stories uh, within stories. And uh, we see that he is very slowly and step by step uh, revealing uh, and expressing that uh, story of Melmoth's life. He is not giving us uh, a straightforward plot of the story. Uh, we see number of sequences in this very story. So this very novel basically presents uh, to us uh, the social commentary on uh, the 19th century England and uh, it uh, condemns uh, Roman Catholicism uh, in the favor of uh, those uh, qualities and merits of protest uh, Protestantism as he himself was uh, the Protestant clergyman. Another important name in the list of uh, novelists of Romantic Age is Mrs. Shelley. Uh, her actual name was Mary Wollstonecraft Shelley and uh, she was born on 30th August uh, 1797 and she died on 1st February 1851. One of the major English novelists, she was famous for her Gothic novel Frankenstein. And uh, another important thing about Mrs. Shelley is that uh, she was uh, the wife of uh, Percy Bysshe Shelley, the romantic poet and philosopher. One another important connection that she had is that she was a uh, daughter of uh, the very important political philosopher William Godwin and we see that uh, Mr. Shelley was uh, influenced by this very philosopher in his uh, early life. So now let's move toward uh, the important uh, work of uh, Mrs. Shelley, that is uh, Frankenstein. As we are discussing Gothic novels, uh, this very novel is uh, a terror tale and uh, it is written in the frame story. Many, many stories are nested in this very story. It tells the story of Victor Frankenstein and he is a, a young scientist who created uh, a machine and uh, this very machine is uh, being created in an unusual type of or unconventional type of experiment uh, which he had done. So we have uh, a monster here but this very monster is basically a mechanical monster that has been created in a test or an experiment and uh, he is uh, having the humanly capabilities or abilities and he is performing a number of horrifying, shocking and terrifying actions and deeds. One uh, very important thing is that uh, this very novel among uh, all the novels I mentioned earlier, this is uh, the one novel which is uh, very much popular even today. People are reading other novels uh, of uh, these very Gothic novels, but this very novel is uh, much more popular than those very novels. Now let's move uh, toward the conclusion of this lecture. As I told you that uh, this uh, literary genre 
the genre of gothic novels that uh, started uh, in England in the second half of 18th century in the works of uh, Horace Walpole and it was developed by Mrs. Anne Radcliffe and Matthew Lewis and in the end we, we discussed uh, that uh, Mrs. Shelley wrote uh, one of the important uh, gothic novel that is Frankenstein. Uh, so that is uh, the end of this lecture. So thank you very much for listening passionately and uh, inshallah see you in the next lecture. Thank you very much.